Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the beginning of the year Canvas checklist webinar. This is Jenny McGee, and I'm an instructional designer in the e-learning division. And also with me today is uh, Rich Cummings, our e-learning technician, and he's going to help me monitor the chat for any questions that you may have. So if you can locate the chat area, if you do have any questions at any point in time, feel free to go ahead and ask them. And then when we get to the end, we'll have a Q&A session so we can get to any questions that you might have. So our agenda today, we're going to go over setting up your course details and your course settings so that everything is the way you need it to be before the course starts. We're going to look at setting up your course navigation to make it easy for your students to find where they need to go. Setting a home page for your course. We're going to look at setting up your grading policies by setting your settings in the gradebook and also setting up weighted groups if that's something that you want to do. We're going to talk about first day and making sure that the students' course materials are available for them from day one. Setting up your content in Canvas. We're going to look at the lockdown browser. We'll talk about how to make sure that everything is published in your course and then publishing your course itself ways to reach out to your students. And then, as I said, we'll have plenty of time at the end if there are any questions. So as you can see, there's a lot of things on our agenda to today. So we're going to move kind of fast, but there is a beginning of the year checklist that goes over all of these items and even more. And as you can see, there are links to guides in Canvas that will show you how to do all of these things. So if there's something that we go over that you're not exactly sure how to do, you'll be able to come to this checklist to look for that. And additionally, this webinar is being recorded and will be put on the um, in the Canvas Faculty Hub in the recorded webinars tab. So if you need to review it later, it is there for you. I do quickly want to show you the uh, Canvas Faculty Hub because I did add a couple of you to that today. So this is the Canvas Faculty Hub. And the recorded webinars tab is right here. So by the end of the day today, or maybe tomorrow, depending on when it's ready, I will have the recorded webinar in this recorded webinars tab. And then the checklist that I mentioned is at the very top of the Canvas Faculty Hub modules. So this is a really handy guide to making sure that you have everything set up and then also having access to all the guides that you need to help you with that. If you're new to the Hub, this is where we put all of our resources and there's a lot of tutorials, training guides and other great information. So if you haven't had time to explore it yet, or maybe haven't been in there recently, go ahead and take a look. And I think you'll find some things that you will find helpful. All right, so let's take a look first in your course settings here. So there's a few things that I want to point out that you may not have known about or might not have used before. So settings in your course navigation is always at the very bottom here of, in the, on the left-hand side. And so the first thing that we want to look at is setting your course start and end dates. So when you look in your course settings next to participation, you're going to see by default that these dates are already set. And you're going to see term here in this drop-down menu. So these are the ones that are set by us in the system, and that's what will automatically apply if you choose not to change them. But if you want to open your course, um, again, it's set to open today, so um, that will already be open. But if you need to extend it or you even want to maybe not open it yet and reset those dates, you can do that by clicking on the drop down menu and changing term to course. And then you'll notice that these are no longer grayed out. And this will allow you to go ahead and start your course if you'd like. And then you can also set when you want to end the course for students. Underneath here are two boxes. If you want to restrict the students from viewing the course before the start date, you can check that box. 
And if you want to restrict students from viewing the course after the end date, so you don't want them to see that course anymore in their completed courses section, then you can check that box as well. Again, students aren't going to have access to your course until you publish it anyway. So even if you put a start date in here, uh, if it's not published, they still won't be able to access it. This is something that's new that they've put in here. So there's now a default due time. So if you usually have a standard time that you want your assignments to be due, uh, the default is 11.59 p.m., but let's say you, for whatever reason, want to usually have students turn things in at 2 p.m. This isn't going to change any due dates that you already have set in there, but it just will put that as the default so that you can easily make that the due time um, on the due date without having to change it every time. And actually, very quickly, I am going to go into this dummy account so that you are seeing everything the way that, not as from my view, there's slight differences um, as an admin. So I want to make sure that you are seeing this from what an instructor's viewpoint would be. So let me get back in here. Okay. All right, so a couple of things here under grading scheme. If you have not set a grading scheme in the past, uh, you may want to go ahead and do that now. If you copied a course for this semester then and set a grading scheme before, that will copy over. But if you check this box that says enable grading scheme, you'll have a link that'll show up under there that says view grading scheme. And you actually will need to, by default, there is a grading scheme in here that is not CCC's standard. I think it's like a 93 to 100 is an A type grading scheme. Where this is our uh, standard is the 90 to 100. But other departments, as you probably know, if you are in one of those departments, have their own grading scheme. So if you need to, you can click select another scheme. And you'll see that we have all of the other grading schemes for Camden County College set up in here. If you happen to be an instructor in another department and you don't see the grading scheme that you use, you can always let me know. But I think that over the years, we've added all of the ones that instructors have let us know be, need to be in there. So basically, this is just going to make sure that if the student has a 93 and that it is an A in your department, that they will see an A letter grade next to their grade if they have a 93, whereas some of these are different. And then down at the bottom, there is a more options button. And there's actually some kind of important things down here that a lot of people may not even realize are there. So by default, courses are not set to show announcements at the top of the course homepage. So if you use announcements or you think that you may this semester, and then announcements can just be sent out so that they, it will show up on the student's dashboard that they have an announcement. And it's an e easy, quick way to communicate with all students. But if you check this box, that will allow the announcements to show up at the top of the course homepage. I don't recommend showing more than three because even with three, the homepage starts to maybe get a little bit cluttered. But it's nice to have those at the top because it's very visible to the students when they click on your course, they can immediately see the announcement at the top of the course homepage. Um, a couple of these that I do also want to point out, this second one here, let students create discussion topics. If you use discussions in Canvas, our recommendation, unless you have a reason not to, is to uncheck this. Because what happens frequently is an instructor has set up a discussion topic that they want students to respond to. But if this is checked, then students are able to, and usually they do this inadvertently, they start their own discussion thread instead of posting to the one that you started. And this can really create a lot of confusion, especially if it's something graded that you're trying to give them credit for. So if you uncheck this, then that will limit them to only being able to respond to discussions that you create and keep them from starting their own discussions. There's other options here. We won't go through all of these because they're 
self-explanatory. But the other one that I want to talk about is high totals in student grades summary. Some instructors like to not show the students their total grade at the moment, especially if it's they have things they add in later. So maybe the student's grade, what it looks like throughout the semester might not be a super accurate example if you have think of participation grades or things like that that you add in at the end. So if you don't want the students to be able to see their total, you can check this box that is unchecked by default. And then just make sure that when you make your changes, you click that update course details button at the bottom. All right, so the next thing that I want to talk about here is still in the course settings, and that is going to be your navigation. So the navigation basically controls what the students will see over here in this left hand navigation menu and also what order everything is in. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this navigation tab within the course settings, and you'll see if you have a course shell that's it's empty that you haven't set put anything in that you haven't copied anything over to. There's all kinds of things here that you probably don't even know what they are. There's a couple I'm not sure. I don't know what this VHL central is. Um, so there's going to be some things here that you definitely are not going to need. In addition, there's things that you will need, but that you may not want your students to be able to see. So we usually recommend putting files into the course modules for access and then hiding the files tab and so on. Quizzes, assignments, a lot of instructors put those in the modules and prefer that the students don't just click on those tabs. So anything under this line here is going to be hidden from students. Some of these things does, doesn't mean that you can't see them or that you can't use them, but it's just not going to show up for the students. So when you want to hide something, you can just drag it down below this line and just keep dragging them all down. And then once you've hidden everything that you don't want, or, and also I do think it's important to, if you're using your modules, they aren't your homepage, um, or you just want students to be able to access them quickly, I recommend moving those up as well. So putting the things that are going to be most used that you want most visible on top helps the students to navigate the course. And again, anything that you know that you are not going to be using or that you don't want students to see can also be hidden. I'm not going to do all of these. You get the idea. But I also want to make sure if you are using the first day program, if your, your course is part of the first day textbook program, please make sure that that is visible to the students. The students need to be able to see that. In some cases, they can't access their book unless they see this first day course materials tab. And in other cases, it, in all cases, they have to be able to see that in order to opt out if that's what they want to do. And so legally, we have to make sure that this is visible. So if you know that you are using the first day textbook program, please, please put this up here because that's probably one of the biggest questions that we get from students at the beginning of the semester is that they can't find their textbook. And then finally, don't forget to save when you're done. I've done that before and that is a pain. So make sure that you save your changes so that you don't have to come back in and do them all again. One other question. Uh, quick thing to mention about the settings, and this isn't something that you would need to do, but if you have more than one section of the same course and you would like to, we can combine both those sections, two, three, whatever it is, into one course shell so that you it's easier to manage. You don't have to try to maintain multiple shells that contain mostly the same information. And within the course, is our ways to assign different due dates if necessary to different sections. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility. You still can see what section everyone is in and you can filter out. So you're only looking at one section at a time in the grade book. So it doesn't just lump them all together, but it will put them all in the same shell and it makes it a lot easier to maintain. So if that is something that you would like for us to do, you can send us an email. I'll have our contact information at the end of the webinar, but 
e-learning at camdencc.edu is our shared box. We all check that in e-learning, and so you'll get a quick response, and we'll be able to help you with cross-listing your courses. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at setting a course homepage. And I'm actually going to go back to my PowerPoint quickly so I can kind of show you a couple of examples. So the course homepage is where a course is going to go. When, you, when the student clicks on the course, this is what they are going to see immediately. And you've got a couple of options for homepages. And so by default, your homepage is going to be your course modules. And this is a great option. There's nothing wrong with leaving it like this. Modules are where most instructors have all their materials anyway. So it takes the students directly to the place where they're going to find their information. But just make sure that when students click on your course, there is something on whatever you use as your homepage that lets the students know what to do first. So we recommend having some kind of a welcome message. You could do a video or just have something typed out, uh, having your syllabus in there. And then also, again, if, if you are a first day course, make sure that you've got that information on how the student needs to access their course materials because it does differ based on what publisher you're using and how you're using those course materials. So sometimes students get confused and it does make it very, a lot easier if you've got that information right at the top. So again, this is your default. So if you want your modules to be your course homepage, you don't have to set a homepage, it will already be set for you. But I do wanna look at, this is a great example of an instructor, it's actually Rich's course, he uses a course homepage rather than the modules. And he's got his textbook here. He has information here about how to access your first day course materials. So just in his course, the student just has to click on the first day course materials. And then it says, click below to go to the modules and begin. So this link, he has linked to the modules right here. So that will easily take the students right to where they need to go. And this is uh, Renee Samara's course. She has links, a link to the current module. She's got the start here with the beginning of course information link, and then the help menu also. So different options that you have, but make sure that whatever the students are seeing first is going to direct them to where they need to go and what they need to do. So let's take a look at how to set a course homepage. So again, if you're using the modules, which this course does, you don't have to do anything to set the course homepage. But if you want to create a page to use as a homepage, you would need to click on the pages link over on the left-hand side. And then if you, you would need to create a page that you want to use. And again, in the Canvas Faculty Hub is information on how to create pages, how to, there's a video in there that would show you how to create a page and use the rich content editor to insert links or link to other places in the course to create a welcome video. All of those things are explained in that video in the Hub. But you would need to create a page and then after you've created your page that you want to use as your homepage, you need to click the three dots, the kebab next to that item and select use as front page. So that's the first step. Then you need to go back to your course homepage and click this choose homepage button over here on the right and select pages front page. And I just borrowed Renee Samaras here to show you. So now this would be the homepage for the course. I still recommend making the modules visible so that students can click, can click directly on that, but you have options of how you want to set this up. And it's very flexible but you just want to make it easy, especially for first time students that are, have not used Canvas before so that they can quickly find where they need to go. Okay, so one quick thing here that I do want to just mention 
is that we recommend that you do check your roster to make sure that all of your students are in your Canvas course. All students, when they register, they should be added to the course shell automatically, and it works most of the time, but unfortunately, there are times where students register, and for whatever reason, something in the system does not work correctly, and they don't get put into the Canvas course. A lot of times, students will let us know, but it's nice if you realize ahead of time, if you even let us know before the course starts, then we can make sure that they're in there for the first day of class. A nice kind of quick way, if you want to, um, you can look at your roster and self-service. That roster will have all of your students on it. And if students drop the, cl the class, it, it will be taken off of your self-service roster. So we just recommend comparing the two rosters to make sure that you don't have anybody missing. And a nice quick way that you can just see how many people are in the course is to click on settings and click on sections and it'll tell you how many users there are. Keep in mind, it's going to count you as a user. So if you have 29 students, it'll say there are 30 users. So if that number matches up with the number of students on your self-service roster, then you should be fine. So this is just something to kind of make things a little smoother. If there's somebody that did fall through the cracks, let, you can let us know about it before classes start and we can get everything set up for them. Okay, so next I want to look at our rating policies. So I'm gonna click on our grades tab. It's gonna take me to my grade book. And over in the upper right-hand corner, you will see this little gear. This is where we set our grade book settings. So these do not copy over from semester to semester. So even if you had them set last semester and copied a course over, you still will need to go in and set these again. So this is nice because if you have students submitting things through Canvas, submitting assignments or quizzes, you have an option to automatically uh, apply a grade for things that are missing. Now, for some reason, <laughs> Canvas has this set to 100% for default. And I don't know really any instructors that want to give students 100% for missing submissions. I think it should probably be 0% since that, that is what most people want. So just be aware that you will need to change this from 100 to 0 if that's what you want to put in there. This can save you a lot of time and you can always go in and change it if you need to. If a student submits something, you can always um, edit their grade in the grade book. But this can save a lot of time for the end of the semester having to go in and put zeros in for all the things that are missing because unless you do this canvas is not going to automatically put zeros in for the items that are missing it's just not going to have any grade in and then it's not going to count against the student the other thing that you can do here is automatically apply a deduction to late submissions so you can choose to deduct a certain percent, let's say you want to do five percentage points, and you can do it per day. Or if you really want to get um, a little more specific, you can do per hour. Um, and then you can also set a floor. So if you want to make sure that the students get some credit, you could say the lowest possible grade would be 50% or however you want to do that. And it will automatically deduct those points. And you'll be able to see that in the grade book how many points were deducted and what their original score would have been. Then just make sure that you click apply settings down here. One other uh, quick thing that I want to look at is under the advanced policy. If you want at the end of this semester to be able to uh, override the total column, so, or not even at the end of the semester, but throughout, and usually it is more of a concern instructors are going through, they want to make sure that the Canvas grade book is accurate and reflects the students, what they feel is the student's grade. If you don't check this box, you will not be able to overwrite what is in that total column for the students. You might not even end up needing it, but it, if, at least if you come in here and check it, then it will be set for you so that you can do that if necessary. And then just make sure that you click apply settings down at the bottom. The other important part of grade settings 
is actually going to be done in the assignments tab. So the assignments tab is where you can set up weighted groups. And this is for instructors who want to put more weight for certain items than for others. So for example, if you want your, your tests or your assignments to be weighted more heavily than maybe quizzes or homework or something like that, you can set that up in here. And I'll just show you very quickly, there is a very detailed video in the Canvas Faculty Hub if you need a uh, refresher or you need to um, go through it more, a little more slowly. But you will need, to begin with, you will need to set up the weighted groups. So you will click on this three dots in the upper right corner, and you'll need to, to click this assignment groups weight. By default, this is not going to be checked. So it's not going to have any groups that you, that you or anywhere to weight the groups. So you're going to need to check this little box. And then you will see all of your groups that you have and you can come in here and put whatever values, whatever weights you want to. Of course, we want our total to be 100% and then click save. What's nice about this too that makes it an easier way to grade. Even if you don't use weighted groups, if you have assignment groups that you have certain assignments in, you can set up policies just for that assignment group. So for example, I know some instructors like to drop a lowest score. You can do that from here as well. So if I go to the settings for an individual group by clicking on these three dots, I can click edit. From here, I can edit the group name, how many, what the percentage is of the, the weight for that group. But here is where if I wanted to, I could drop the lowest score and it will just ignore basically when figuring the average for a certain assignment group, it will ignore the lowest one or two, however many you want to do. So that can make things easier for you if that's something that you like to do. Okay, so I do want to um, talk a little bit more about first day just briefly. So I, I did mention, of course, making sure that this first day course materials tab is visible. It's very, very important to make sure that it is there. And again, just if you put clear directions, and actually I am going to go back to my modules here for my homepage. Um, but we always recommend having clear directions in there in the module or on your homepage on how to access those first day course materials. And we also recommend as part of that information, having a number or directions for tech support for the students. So you should have a rep. Um, if you're not sure, you can ask your department chair for whatever publisher you use. We can help to an extent, but there are certain things that really have to be done on the other side, on, on the publisher's end. And so we recommend having a support number in there, depending on who your publisher is, so that if a student is having tech support issues with their book or their course materials, they have a number that they can call for assistance. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about course content. So <clears throat> there are directions in the Canvas Faculty Hub on how to replicate your course, meaning if you've taught something in the a course in the past and you want to import that material into your new shell, um, there are detailed directions. So I'm not going to go over that here, but just know that, that you can always copy a course from the past into or, or duplicate it into a current course. We always recommend having your syllabus in here, even if you're a face-to-face -face instructor, it's nice to have the syllabus, those types of first day information that you need in there for the schedule, um, your office hours, all of that good information that students need. That way it's always there for them. If halfway through the semester, they've lost their syllabus or forget something, they can always come to Canvas and see that information again. And we also recommend that you try to have everything imported 
prior to the start of the course. So it doesn't mean that you can't add items. However, we have run into issues um, with quizzes being imported after a course starts and kind of wreaking havoc. <laughs> um, quizzes, I don't know why, but if let's say you have a quiz in, in the course called quiz number one and it's an active course and you decide that you want to import a different version of that um, from a previous semester into your course. I've seen two different things. One is that it has overwritten any scores that are in the current course because it puts that brand new test in there. The other thing I've seen is that the scores stayed in there, but they somehow were applied wrongly to the new version of the quiz. I don't, it's, it's very unpredictable <laughs> what's going to happen. So, um, and I talked to uh, Canvas support about it at one point when I was working on it and I asked, you know, why, why is it like that? Why can't they just give the quiz a different name so that it doesn't overwrite an existing quiz? And they said, well, ideally instructors have everything in the course before the course starts. And I said, well, that's not real life because things change and, you know, things need to be tweaked. But just be very aware of that um, because it's, especially when you're talking about quizzes that students have already taken and scores that are in there, it's, it's always very nerve wracking and causes a lot of panic for the instructor um, when something like that happens. So I would recommend trying your best not to import any quizzes after the course goes live. If you do have to, please make sure that the quiz you're importing has a different name than the, than the ones that are already in there so that you don't have issues. Okay, so I do see that someone has raised their hand. Hi, Jenny. Uh, Hi, Joe. Joe Lee here. <clears throat> I have a question for you. You were going over the, uh, I'm sorry, you were going over the grading. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I have is I have a lot of, uh, I select what assignments uh, that I want to give to the students, but it's not only the assignments that I have. Uh, how do, and, and when I look at that grading uh, document, I've got a lot of these unpublished ones. How can I eliminate that from my view? Do I have to actually delete the unpublished assignment or uh, do I have to just live with it? Yeah, so if, if it's in there and you don't want to, to see an unpublished assignment, you would have to delete it. Otherwise, it's going to look like this with just this uh, circle down at the end. Um, no, so, I'm, I'm talking about in the grading. Oh, in the grades. Oh, yes. So in the grades tab, yes. So on view at the top, you can come down and unpublished assignments is checked by default. But if you uh, click on that, it will eliminate, it will put a check mark. I'm sorry, it'll remove the check mark next to unpublished assignments and it will eliminate anything unpublished, unpublished from your view. That's great. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Okay, so a couple other things that I want to mention about um, content. One nice thing to do if you have links in your course, uh, outside links to external websites is to run a link check and you click on this validate links in content and it will just run a quick link validation and make sure that all of the links that are in the course work. So we all know that things change on the internet, links that used to work don't work anymore. So this is a nice quick way to just make sure that there's not anything in here and you can see that there's the, this is kind of a course that I use for random things. So who knows what these things are, but you'd be surprised sometimes. Um, it, it'll usually come up with one or two that are broken that you would need to to fix or, or change or find a new resource. Um, and then a quick thing too that we end up seeing sometimes is that if you've replicated a course from a past semester, a lot of times instructors have things in there that they aren't planning on using, but they also don't want to get rid of, which is fine but you have to make sure that those items are unpublished. So instructors 
that, that use modules, and we do recommend using modules as much as practical for students to access items. It just makes it a lot easier than having them uh, click on the assignments tab for all their assignments and their pages tab to see any pages and so on. But keep in mind, what ends up happening is I've seen some instructors that have replicated courses over time, they end up with a bunch of assignments that they don't always use. And it, students are still able to see those assignments, even if they are not in the modules. So even if you have your assignments tab disabled or, or hidden from students, if the assignments are or discussions or quizzes, whatever's in there, whatever is published, students will still be able to see by clicking on the grades tab. Um, so they'll be they'll see a list of all of the assignments for the semester and down toward the bottom will be anything that doesn't have a due date and there will be links to it. And they may not be able to access it completely, but a lot of times those items will also end up showing up on the dashboard or in the calendar. Canvas still thinks that those assignments are something that you want the students to do. And those links end up being in other places. So like I said, the grades tab, if you use the syllabus tab, the calendar, um, sometimes the dashboard, depending on how the assignments are set up. So please make sure that you go in, look through anything that you are not using, please make sure that it's not published. And you can easily publish and unpublish just by clicking on the little green check mark or it turns into a circle with a line through it. So this is not published and this is published. So just keep in mind that just because it's not in the modules and, and generally it just causes confusion for the students because they're not sure what all these other assignments are that they're not seeing in the modules, but they are seeing them on their dashboard. So that can just cause some extra confusion. Okay, so I do want to um, mention the Respondus Lockdown Browser. This is, uh, we implemented this at the beginning of last semester. So it's fairly new for Camden County College. And if you aren't sure what I'm talking about, Lockdown Browser and Monitor is a proctoring software. Basically, it's going to lock down the student's computer so that they cannot access anything but the Canvas quiz. And then it's going to, if you choose to use the monitor part, it's going to also record the student while they are taking the test. And there is a lot of information in the Canvas Faculty Hub. If you scroll down to third-party applications in the modules of the Hub, you'll see a whole section on Respondus Lockdown Browser and Monitor. So this is basically going to give an explanation of what that is. Oops, I'm in there as a this other uh, student. So that's this is going to give you the link for it, explain what it is. There are resources in here for more information if you need them. And then we also recommend making sure that you put verbiage for the students into your syllabus so that they know from the beginning of the course that they are going to need to use this. They're going to, they can watch a video that will let them know what it is and how to go about it. Um, and also so that the students are aware that they will be recorded while taking an exam if, if you choose to use that piece of it as well. So we have a lot of um, resources in here and Rich has also done a lot of trainings on this. So we can always set up if you want to have an individualized training for your for you or for you and your colleagues in your department. We can always set that up as well if you're new to this. But we want to make sure that students are, are aware as soon as possible that this is going to be part of it. There is also within the quiz, there is a quiz that you can try on your own so you can see what the student is going to experience. Now, just FYI, this is going to have to, you will have to do this on a personal device. If you try to download Lockdown Browser on a device issued by Camden County College, you're gonna have to get OIT to log in for you every time, which is kind of a pain. So um, you, you would wanna try this out on your own personal device. But there's um, 
a try it quiz in here with and without the the monitor piece. So just the lockdown browser and then the lockdown browser with the recording in monitor. So you can try both of those. And then we have individualized directions for the different types of devices that students have. So you may want to put these in your Canvas shell somewhere um, so that students with different types of devices are able to see what they need to do. Uh, this, this particular one is for instructors to figure out um, how to enable it for iPads. So again, I'm not going to do a whole tutorial on this, but since it is new, I wanna make sure that everyone knows that it is now in place and that there are resources in here so that you can get trained on using it. If you are going to use Lockdown Browser um, and monitor with your students, it's really important to create a practice quiz for students so that they can take that well ahead of the first exam that you're going to use with it. So if there are any tech issues, we can get those resolved well in advance of having to use it for an actual exam. A lot of times it's just user error for the most part, um, something that they're not doing correctly, but we wanna make sure that we get all of those kinks worked out before the student's trying to take a real exam. When you click on Lockdown Browser, you will see a list of all of the quizzes that you have in your course. And you can click on the settings for each exam. You have to do this for each one. Click settings. And then if you want to require Lockdown Browser, you will have to select that. By default, it will be turned off. So you would need to change it to require Lockdown Browser for the exam. And then if you want to have the exam proctored, you will need to turn that on as well. So this is what will turn on that recording for the students. There is all kinds of information in here on what these settings do. And again, there's lots of information in the hub as well. And let us know if you need more information. Um, we can always help you out with that if it's something that you have not used in the past. Okay, just a couple more things and then we're gonna get to our question and answer. So let me go back to my course here. So you also, of course, want to make sure that you publish everything in your course that you want your students to see. So we just talked about um, making sure that the individual assignments that you want, the ones you want are published, the ones that you don't want students to, to have access to are not published. The other thing, and this happens sometimes, is that the individual items in a module are published, but the module itself is not, which means that none, nothing in here is going to be accessible to students. So just make sure that your items are published, your modules are published. A good trick for this is to use the student view option, and that way you can make sure that students are able to see what you want them to see and they're not seeing what you don't want them to see. So just try that when you're ready to make the course live, you think you have everything set up, go use the student view and that will allow you to see for sure what the other, what the students are going to see. You can leave student view by clicking that button in the lower right hand corner. And then of course, you're going to want to make sure that you publish your actual course. So you can do that from your homepage and click publish when you're ready to make it live. You can also do it from your dashboard. You'll see a publish button on your course tiles and you can just publish them right from there. So just make sure that you do that or your students will not be able to access your course. And we usually, I usually check and just send a reminder if I see any that haven't been published yet. Um, <clears throat> but students can't access it until you do. Okay, so the last thing, I do want to encourage you to think about reaching out to your students before the first day of class. Um, we'll get, we always inevitably get a couple of panicked students the day before classes or a couple days before who are panicked because they can't see their courses um, yet and they have not heard anything from the instructor and they don't know what they need to do when they're thinking that they're missing something. And really it's just 
the course is going to be published that next day and they'll be fine. But it is nice if you want to reach out to your students a week in advance, a few days in advance to kind of let them know what to expect, let them know how the textbook is going to work if they need to buy it in the bookstore or if it's first day. All of that information just kind of eases their minds a little bit, lets them know, yes, I am definitely enrolled in this class and uh, the instructor knows that I exist and it kind of helps them to feel more comfortable when they're going into the semester. You can contact your students through the Canvas inbox and you can send a message to all students or you could do it through an announcement. Just keep in mind before you can contact them through the inbox or announcements, the course has to be published. So you won't see a course listed until it is published. But you can easily just come to the Canvas inbox. Your active courses are going to be listed under favorites. And you select the course that you want to email the students in, click this compose a new message here, and then you can click on this little address book and click all and it will send it to all or you can just select the students and select all students and then put your message in here, click send and the students will get an email copy sent to their email address as well as they will see this when they look at their Canvas inbox. Okay, so that is everything that I have for you today. I again really encourage you to uh, check out the Canvas Faculty Hub if you're new to it or haven't been in there a while. Um, if you have any questions, I guess that the chat, I don't know why the chat is not working, but um, I guess it's not. So if anyone has a question, I do see one. So I'm going to um, unmute uh, Ms. Bailey here. So if you want to ask your question, go ahead. Can you hear me, Jenny? I can. Oh, good. Okay. I have kind of several questions and I wanted to put them in the chat, but mine said that it was an active. Yeah, it's so weird. Sorry about that. That's okay. So um, does, does Canvas tell you how to create a video and then how to put it in as well? Yeah, so let me go to the um, the hub here for you. So I would recommend looking at this new rich content editor video okay. because this will show you how to use all the features of the rich content editor. Um, and part of that is the video recording that's embedded in the, in the rich content editor. Okay, all right. So and I have what? Sure. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I is that is that same the new rich content editor video? Would that give you information on how to use uh, clip art as well? Um. Yeah. So this there's uh not clip art built into the rich content editor, so you'd have to get it elsewhere. Yes. But, uh -huh. Um. But yes, it will show you how to put an image, um, okay. either clip art or a photograph, whatever that you need to. It'll show you how to how to put that in as well. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. All right. All right, Howard. I've enabled yours. I think. Thank you. You're welcome. Question regarding email. Mm -hmm. I know I can email students, but is there any way to email using Canvas for someone who's not in the course, like my coordinator? There is not. Unfortunately, um, with Canvas Inbox, the only people that you can contact are people that are in the course with That's you. That's what I thought. I just wanted to confirm it. Another question. Mm -hmm. I've imported a course from last semester, but the assignments come in the group imported assignments, and now I'm stuck changing each one of those assignments into their appropriate groups. Is there any way to avoid that? So it's going to put them into the um, imported assignments. Like you see, I have that same thing here. Um, really, the only thing you can do is just you'll have to drag them and, and drop them is probably the quickest way to do that. Um, you can also do it by clicking on the, the menu and saying move to, but that's a little bit more of a process because then you have to select where you want it um, and all of that. So probably the easiest thing to do is just within your assignments, just come over here to these double row of dots, and then you can just move them around as needed. I, I have a particular question. I have two sections of computer literacy, but they mm -hmm. are out of sync by one day. So one class starts September the 1st and one class starts September the 6th. 
I've got different due dates because of that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's advisable to put that into one combined section because of it. So you could, um, that's up to you there. You can, um, trying to think if I have an example of one that is, is cross-listed here. Um, when you assign a, an assignment, um, you will see, let me get into my assignments. Okay, so let's, um, let me edit this. So down at the bottom of your um, assignment settings, you have this assign to box and mm -hmm. um, where it says assign to, I see it. you will see the sections listed under course section. So I, you can choose the section that you want, give them a, a due date, then click add and assign to choose the other section and give them a different due date. Perfect. Thank you very much. You just made my life a lot easier. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'd love to hear that. <laughs> All right. Let me see anyone else here. I think we've got. Um... I have one more if you have me. Um... Okay, sure. You're still unmuted. Go ahead. Okay. So to use, uh, uh, do you have access to, for example, shells or sandbox that you can, that I can you know, play with or whatever. Yeah, so you can create that at any time from your dashboard over on the right-hand side. Um, you'll see it says start a new course. Oh, okay. And you, that will just, you can name it whatever you want and then that will just be available for you to, to use for whatever. Okay. All right. Okay. okay, you're welcome. Joanne, you can go ahead and talk when you're ready. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, okay, good, great. <laughs> I, I came a little late, something caught, I got caught up in something, and you may have already covered this, but it's something I did uh, two semesters ago. I didn't teach last semester. Um, I wanted to, I have two identical courses on the same day, so I'd like to combine them. Uh, okay. But I've been able to, you know, uh, separate them, you know, by section. I, I forget how to do that. I mean, that is doable, right? Yeah, you mean in the grade book? Well, everywhere. I just would like to fix the, you know, make the assignments once so that they all get it. Right. So um, you can do um, what I showed Howard, where you, in the assigned to down at the bottom, you select the section and then you just give a due date and then you can add another yeah, after but I need that. Them all, I need them all in one course to start with. Yes, yeah, so you'll just need to send an email to elearning at camdencc.edu and let us know the courses and we'll combine them for you. Oh, great. And uh, will it have the difference? I forget if there was a spot for the section number so I can tell, you know. Yeah, so you can go in the people tab and see the section numbers. You can also do it in the grades tab. You'll see where, what section they're in, they are in. Um, okay. And you can also filter in the grades tab by, by section so that you're only looking at one section at a time. Okay, sounds good. Okay. It's been so long, I feel like I can't believe it's been so long and I, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get back in. Scratch. Oh, God. Right, we'll get back you into it. I'll no send problem. you a note. Should okay. I send a note to you or to whom? Um, you can send it just to elearning at camdencc.edu okay. because we all check that. So you'll get a quick response that way. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Jenny, can you hear me? I can. Is this Harry? Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Hey. I had something clicked that had to be unclicked or something. But question, the last time I uh, added a video um, to a module was back when... Uh, everything was being taught online. And the way I was told to do it was to record and screencast, then transfer that to YouTube, and then copy and paste the link into the module. Is mm -hmm. that still the same way to do it? Or can I do ever, can I do a video right within uh, Canvas now? Or do I have to do the screencast YouTube so it's up to you. Now, the, the video recorder in Canvas is very limited. It's pretty much just to make like a talking head video. It doesn't have any kind of screen share capability okay. in it. Um, so we recommend if, if you, I mean, it depends on what you want it for. If it's just where you're just want to be able to kind of have instructor presence and give your a message to the students, that works fine. But if it's something that you want to be able to share your screen and do other things like that, have a presentation or something, okay. then it's not capable of doing that. Okay. Um, and there is a limit. So there's only a gig and a half of storage yeah. space. 
So as, as you know, with videos that fills up very quickly. Um, so if you're going to be do something you're going to be doing a lot, then I do still recommend doing the YouTube method. Okay. So that'll work screencast YouTube to the module. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 One other question. Sure. My course that I'm supposed to teach the uh, fundamentals of food science, uh, as of yesterday, it was not, um, in canvas in the dashboard so that I can, un so that I can publish it. Uh, so now it's possible. The course isn't going to meet. I'm trying to find out from my supervisor, but can't get any feedback. And, uh, so is there a way for it to be put into the dashboard so that I can at least begin to play around with it, even though there's a possibility the course isn't going to meet? Yeah, so send us an email as long as it's been assigned to you and colleague and, and that you have at least one student um, that is registered for it, it should still create a shelf for you. So okay. if you want to send e-learning at candencc.edu, just send us the, the name of the course and we can look into it um, occasionally. For some reason, we have to have OIT push an update so that that shell gets sure. generated. Um, but we can just kind of look into it and see what's going on with the course and then get back to you. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. All Joe? right. Yes, okay. Joe? This is, this is Joe Wade. Okay. Um, I'm probably the only person in Camden County College that doesn't know this. But what does that big blue button do? Oh, okay. So big blue button is a built-in conferencing oh. tool. Um, it's fine, but I recommend Zoom. Um, it's for one thing, you can only there's no way to download a recording, and so and it's only available for two weeks. In oh. fact, I think they might have shortened it to a week, but I. I haven't um, checked into it in the last month or two. Um, so it, it works, but since we do have Zoom and Zoom, you can download the video, you can, you know, put it on YouTube, you can put it in your course, you can do all this. It's, it's, Zoom's a lot more flexible. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Joanne, did you have another question? Well, oh, I have a thousand questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at your... I'm looking at your published courses and thinking, hmm, what's the uh, uh, Canvas Faculty Hub? Is that something we can use or we already had? Yeah, you should already be in there. I double checked. I think everybody that's in this webinar is in there. So you should see that okay. on your dashboard. Is that what we have right now? That's what we're in right now? Um, that's, that is what I was showing you that has the resources in it. That's this. Um, that has the training videos and all the, the resources oh, and stuff. I, I came um, in a little late. I might have missed that. I, oh, I, okay. I think you are in there. I, I'll double check. And if you're not, I'll make sure that I add you. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Okay. All right. So we are going to have to wrap this up, but um, Harry, did you have another question? No, that's okay. I'll, okay. Uh, oh, I, can get a, I know how to get a hold of you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let me um, let me put this up here so I can make sure that I show you. The, uh, so here is our um, e-learning e at camdencc.edu. Um, and that, again, that's our shared box. So it's very quick to make sure who, we all see it. We all check it constantly. So you'll get someone quickly. And then this is our, um, these are our, our staff. So uh, Dr. Chad is our associate dean of e-learning and Rose is the assistant director. I'm the instructional designer, and then our program technician is Rich. So that's all of our contact information. But as I said, we all have access to the shared box, and we all check it all the time. So that's a great way to get a hold of us as well. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. If you have any other questions, um, feel free to, send, to shoot us an email or give us a call, and we'll be happy to, to help you out. Um, there is also still in the Canvas Faculty Hub the... Um, one-on-one -on -one help in, in upcoming trainings in Canvas help. We also have our uh, register for a one-on-one -on -one Canvas help session. You can sign up for that way. So thank you so much, everyone. I hope you found it helpful and I hope that you have a great semester. Thank, thank you, Jenny. Thank you for your help. Thanks everyone.